Apple's smallest Mac starts at just $600, but is the new Mac Mini good enough for content creation? Today, I'll go over what it's been like using this, as well as some limitations I had to deal with. So let's get into it. Okay, I want to quickly go over my setup first. The base Mac Mini has an M4 chip with 16 gigs of unified memory and 256 gigs of storage. For my accessories, I'm using the LG 32-inch ultrafine display ergo, the Logitech MX Mechanical Mini, MX Master 3S, and the Apple Magic Trackpad. If you want to see my full desk tour, I'll leave it in the cards and link it in the description box below. Alright, let's talk about ports. On the back, there's one for power, of course, Gigabit Ethernet, HDMI 2.1, and three Thunderbolt 4 ports. And something new this year, ports on the front, two USB-C, and a headphone jack. After I plug in my accessories, all the ports are used up. I have the power cord connected, Ethernet for my NAS, and Thunderbolt ports for my display, external SSD, and microphone. I also have a flash drive and SD card reader on the front. Most people will probably use two or three ports, but I keep everything plugged in for convenience. You may have noticed that there aren't any USB-A ports, so you'll need a USB-C to USB-A adapter. If you want even more ports, you can always get a Thunderbolt dock like this one from Caldigit, which adds, I think, 18 additional ports. I used this with my M1 Pro MacBook Pro, but removed it just for the sake of this video. Also, the speakers don't sound as good. They lack any bass, so you might want to get external speakers or use headphones for video editing. So ports shouldn't be a big issue, but storage might be. With all of my files copied over and apps installed, I have about 136 gigs of free space remaining. My important data is in the cloud, and I normally have an offline version of it, but I had to manage my storage wisely. iCloud Drive is set to optimize Mac storage, as well as the Photos app, and music is set to streaming only. I mentioned earlier that I have an external SSD, which is this 2TB Samsung T7, and a NAS that's in a different room. This one is from Ugreen, and it has over 100 times the storage of the Mac Mini. I store all of my YouTube footage and Time Machine backups on these drives. I highly recommend an external SSD since video projects can take a lot of space. Plus, the Mac Mini is going to be stationary most of the time. My Final Cut Pro library is about 30 gigs, and that's with one completed video and one short. If you plan on working on multiple projects, you should probably upgrade to 512 gigs or 1 terabyte. There are also Thunderbolt drives that you can buy and edit off of because the read and write speeds are going to be way faster than a normal USB 2.0 drive. I just want to say thank you Apple Intelligence because if Apple didn't add any AI features, we still might be stuck with 8 gigs of memory on a Mac. With 16 gigs, you have more headroom for your work, apps, and multitasking. During my usage, I found there was some swap memory depending on the task, but 16 gigs is more than enough for most people. I usually have a few apps open like Notion, Music, Mail, Messages, Safari, and Twitter. And here's my memory usage and activity monitor. There's still about 5 gigs left for other activities. And if you do a lot of office work, you can add Microsoft Word and Excel and still have some memory left over. Some days, I had a couple hundred megabytes of swap memory, but the Excel files were quite big. Now for the big question, is 16 gigs enough for video editing? It is, but be ready for a lot of swap memory. Here's a video I made last week. All of this was recorded on iPhone 16 Pro Max in 4K 30fps. Then I added some background music, text, and transitions. There's also an outro effect for my ending. I'm going to move Activity Monitor on my iPad Pro so you can see what happens when I add one effect at a time and wait for it to render. Swap memory jumps from time to time, and this was with the same 6 apps I had opened before. Coming from the M1 Pro chip, the M4 feels the same. Normal activities run just fine, and there isn't a speed difference. Browsing the web with multiple tabs is smooth, having a 4K video playing is great, and using a few apps to write a YouTube script is good. The only area where I notice a difference is with videos. I took the same project and rendered and exported it on both the MacBook Pro and Mac Mini, and here are the results. Exporting this project took about 3 minutes and 13 seconds on the M4 chip, and 3 minutes and 33 seconds on the M1 Pro. But for rendering, it took about 1 minute and 31 seconds for the M4, and 1 minute and 16 seconds for the M1 Pro. This is just one video, but the CPU and GPU tasks almost balance out. So unless you use a lot of graphics in your videos, rendering will take a little bit more time. The cheapest Mac Mini is good enough for video editing, 
but you might need to manage your storage wisely. Personally, I would upgrade the memory just so it's a little more future-proof. Would you get the base Mac Mini? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you'll be notified when I post new videos. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!